Alright. Figured I'd do some spectating before the stream starts. Um, I'm gonna say Ike's gonna win. He's a great casual character. Though his moves do be kinda... Let's say slow. In fact, we're seeing some bets on Mario as well, and a little bit on Robin and Roy. So only time will tell though. Here we are on the match with the Ike, Mario, Roy, and Robin playing each other on Pogginus Temple Mega version. And as far as I know, it's just a good old brawl that doesn't have any items. Oh, it almost looked like Heiko was the one getting the Wombo combo, but turns out it was the Wombo combo all for Roy to get caught in it. Robin landing those snakes and taking out Sykes for stuff. In fact, Robin's goal just seems to just uh, charge up to Thoron and then just to uh, let it rip. Although she does have different goals in mind as well, just controlling the battlefield in her own ways. But yeah, Robin and Mario are pretty good at surviving so far. Ike just now has a final smash, and decides if it would be better used on Mario instead of Roy, who would just as easily get KO'd by the Great Eater. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I'd better stay back on this one. Also, Robin's still at three stocks. Not for long though. Roy's final smash takes her out. Now Mario's ready to unleash his finale. As you can see, it's only really good at high percents. Oh, uh, well, looks like most of us saved that wrong here. Robin could very well steal the victory here. <laughs> and it appears that Robin and Roy are aware of this. And that'll be a stop taken away from Roy. Mario gets hit by the Thoron Oblivious, but soon still alive. But then Robin's Sword Smash takes out Mario. Safe to say, everyone is just see, hey, landing some of their own hits on each other and all of that. I was about to say Mario's in the lead, but see, it turns out Robin still has a stock lead. Because presents isn't all that matters here. Here's a Robin is conserving her Thoron for just the right moment. Sends Mario off the stage with it, but that wasn't enough to take him out. Robin just successfully dodges that final smash, and Mario and Roy end up taking each other out. And Robin goes on to, I guess, ascend to higher rankings in all these. Or, uh, in quick play or something. But yeah, that's a total heartbreaker for all of us who voted on Ike to win. Anyways, next up we got Zinness, Aegis, and Bayonetta. This is a bit more of a professional match here. 
It also looks like it could be an elite smash, or it could very well be, or it could very well still be in quick play and if the uh, requirements to get into elite smash have been raised ever since then. Anyways, my imaginary money's on this. I mean, everyone here may have mastered the art of neutral. With advantage and disadvantage. But it's entirely possible that they don't really know what to do in a free-for-all. That would have been something if Ness also got caught up in the Flame Nova. But yeah, even though Ness is deed in the first part of the match, it still could very well be anyone's game, as long as their name doesn't start with N. <laughs> was looking for a wombo combo there. Well, at least he got one. The PK fire into Bayonetta forward smash. And now it looks like it's Bayonetta's turn to get bullied, since she has a uh, stomp lead. And now the I guess the uh, fourth smash from Mithra takes out Bayonetta's uh, first stock. And Ness is uh, playing it safe now. Just making sure to not rush in too much, just using all that uh, PK flashiness to uh, get some major damage in on the opponents while also staying safe to a degree anyways. And it just to fell out of the lightning buster. In fact, it looks like the Ness and Mithra aren't really done Wombo tumbling the bayonetta yet. Oh wait, yeah they are. Ness has now has a stock lead thanks to all that campiness from really. Never mind, he no longer has a stock lead. <laughs> If anybody happens to get first place against Ness who gets second place, then the winner might very well be lucky. Now the Bayonetta is getting Wombo comboed again, but fortunately for, sh for her she manages to break out. But then the Ford Smash from Ness takes out Bayonetta's final stock, and now it's just up to Ness and Mithra. And Pyra, if she ever comes out. Throw Invincibility, protecting Mithra from the PK Flash, and Mithra is our lucky winner for that match. And yeah, the Aegis player goes on to gain more of that GSP. And Ness vows to get and Ness vows to be better at recovery. Let's do one more match. We got Bowser versus Lucas. They're both on a downward spiral, but seeing that both of them are also pretty high up in elite smash status, I'm actually gonna say Bowser. Since I have a really good feeling he knows how to utilize his big body privileges to the best of his ability. Like, to a huge advantage. Three, two, 
Anyways, on to the Mega Windy Hill Zone we go. Bowser's already in the forefront here. Just playing a really defensively here. And I guess also taking good advantage of Lucas wanting to hold forward all the time. Super Armor on the down smash takes out Lucas's first stock. It almost seemed that Super Bowser wanted to end the match quickly with the uh, flying slam here. And Bowser may have to do that. And I suppose that's alright. That means he gets a percentage advantage and the, even the stage advantage if he can help it anyways. But yeah, once Bowser finds an opening, he really does capitalize in this matchup in particular. Not just in the character matchup, but also in the player matchup. PK Free sending Bowser almost all the way to the blast zone there. Yeah, looks like it's about time for Bowser to gain a bigger advantage here. Up tilt takes out Lucas' second stock. And then Lucas answers with his own up smash. Just deciding to do nothing in the face of Bowser talking and with the up tilt that KO'd him. I mean, does that spell a dignity for Lucas, or is that more of a meek fear of Bowser or something? Like, that moment whenever you take a game off of a top player in your region. Okay, Lucas cooking. Bowser, where's your juggles? Well, I guess sending Lucas off stage would also work in some, in some capacity. But yeah, things are getting really close here. Lucas is narrowly avoiding that down smash from Bowser. Down throw? Okay, yeah. Lucas might actually win this one. <coughs> Ford Smash takes out Bowser's final stalk, and I can't help but think that the down throw from Bowser was a misinput. But... yeah. I was about to... to say something about Bowser knowing how to navigate the big body privileges so well. I guess I'm not wrong. He just got outplayed. Let's say that. Anyways, let's start up the arena. I had a feeling that see, the music was still playing. Well, the end game music was still playing in Smash. Anyways, I've been playing a lot of Octopath Traveler 2 lately, so I'll just a warm up for in case I want to get into a local once again. It's well tomorrow. So we got GSB17 as the arena ID. But yeah, as far as Octopath Traveler 2 goes, I have officially finished all the stories that all 
well, that Casti, Ochet, Oswald, and Dethrone have to offer. So I decided to put them on the side for now to make way for the other half of the playable characters. Agnia, Partitia, Temenos, and Hikari. Also known as Team F. It's a bit harder to pronounce and being good for obvious reasons. But, yeah, just playing as the other half of the classes in this new Octopath game really shows how much Team Asano improved on the concepts presented in the first game. Like, Agnia's talent is to use the uh, alert townspeople that is to use the town people that she alerted to help with the buffing allies in battle. Like, each time she performs a dance and she has an alert companion, if that companion will also add on to the buffs. And that's pretty cool. Makes Agamia quite a masterful buffer. Regardless though, I still have a feeling that she might not be doing too much in battle, so I decided to stick the Inventor subclass on her, just to see how that would go. It's hard to say for sure just yet, since I haven't found a need to utilize everyone to their fullest potential yet, because I just decided to give everyone the weapons that I... well, not weapons. Not just weapons, I mean. But I decided to give everyone all the equipment that Team Kurt has gathered over the 30 hours that I've spent on that game now. And so safe to say they're just sweeping through all the encounters. And yeah, case in point. Temnos Chapter 2. So, I guess it was supposed to be a battle against a big league architect who has been killing people left and, left and right in the town that Tominos was investigating. But one hired help from Partitio, well, one hired help from the veterans that Partitio has. It will. Literally just dude, took him out in three hits. So yeah, that's everything here. Anyways, so now on to the so first match of the day. Be Vile Fin Director. Decided to ledge draw straight into the neutral air, but I guess I was really mistaken. And Vilnot takes out Phoenix's super silk. Rolled right into the holy water, it seems. Ran right into the holy water, it seems. Oh, I somehow managed to SDI out of all of that. Take 
All right, no problem here. And the four tilt takes out my first stall. Oh, actually, I just realized a uh, really good ledge trap that I could do in the case that I catch a Belmont's holy water. Just throw the holy water onto the ledge and then remain on the ledge, waiting for a roll in. In which I could just uh, quickly punish a Belmont see if we're rolling with a Dipper Board Smash. Tried to catch the Holy Water. Got him with an air there. And the uh, Belmont takes out the, the Belmont's the first stock, or second stock. Oh, he almost got me with the axe, actually. Um, all right. That's too high, actually. I suppose there was a better way to utilize the holy water there. And the forward tilt takes out my second stock. Meant to down smash, not sure what that input was. Maybe I should just focus on ledge trapping at the moment. Whenever I send Richter off stage anyways. Since he's always gonna make it back, okay, no matter whatever I try there. Right in the feet. The Felmo takes a few things as final stuff. And I go on to stream the rings for a bit longer. To grow. Good fight. Ready? And I guess I'll... I guess we'll be at this for a bit. Three, two, one, Wait a minute, I just go. realized something. <laughs> Why doesn't... I wonder why Richter doesn't see... Actually, why don't any of the Belmonts see bother throwing any punches? Like, they definitely got the arms to do so, don't you think? Or maybe they're more suited to throwing weapons at the strength that they usually throw them. Like, that axe must be heavy. <laughs> Go. 
Oh, it's too late on the ledge up there. And I actually could have saved him with a holy water. So. doesn't have a jump to get back to the stage. So that's that for that stuff here. Try to do a uh, wave bounce to fail not to just to. Just to get a really good catch of the landing there. Alright, fine. This could work. Anyways, the shield break to Amir takes out Phoenix's final stop. And it looks like we'll go on to continue fighting here. Or we could do that. Understandable. <laughs> I guess it's not very often that you just get a really big shield break and all that. In fact, I wasn't really expecting to get a shield break with the Phalanx 2 at all. Just wanted to get some of the stage control back, which I guess getting shield broken is a part of anyways. Okay. So Yeah, let's not last night, but on Tuesday whenever I had that early stream We I went to see a couple movies with some friends of mine. First we saw a very notable film called Cocaine Bear. And I guess we all thought it was gonna be one of those good old monster movies that you would see as, like, as you would see Dracula or, 
Frankenstein or something like that. But it turned out to also be a comedy and that sort of thing. Didn't really check all the boxes with us, honestly. Oh yeah, yeah. That movie could have also had the same energy as Jaws, but nope, it just had its own energy. At least the bear's reputations aren't gonna get too defaced for this. Mainly since they're already kind of vicious in a way. Meanwhile, for Jaws, I believe that that movie kinda ruined the reputation of sharks for a good while. But now we know that the sharks don't attack humans very much at all. Like, in fact, I heard from someone while I was still in school that a shark did try to... Well, not try, but... A shark did bite an arm of a person off, but... The shark ended up spinning out the arm. And as the research progressed, as it turns out, the sharks would often mistake surfers for seals. So, there's that as well. Ah, uh, yeah. Ironically, the movie we went to see right after Cocaine Bear was the Jesus Revolution. Based off of a series of events that took place in California to start a revival for Christianity there. And it worked really well. As you can see today, at least down here in the Bible Belt, that is. Oh yeah, and I guess out of all the great things that happened in that movie. Like... Having a... Having a revival start all because a pastor led a few hippies into his church. Which ended up... Causing a... Well, okay. In the end, it would cause something like a Paul and Barnabas moment where... Uh, well, for those who aren't familiar... In the Book of Acts, there... There were... Two... Preachers, I guess? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's what they would be called in modern times. But yeah, two preachers, Paul and Barnabas, had a disagreement over whether they should take Mark, who previously deserted them at an earlier point along. And the disagreement was so great that they just went their own ways. So yeah, something similar happens in those events where the hippie known as Lonnie Frisbee had a disagreement with the Pastor Chuck. Yeah, that's his name. So Lonnie went down to Florida while Chuck 
while Chuck stayed in California to continue the services. Hey, welcome, Judgment. Well, I'm just too glad you're here. Anyways, let's have a good fight. King DDD versus Byleth. Understandable if some preparations had to be made, though. Three, Anyways, two, on to your Lilac Cruise we go. go. put it in the up smash but that's all right oh that's unfortunate um all right Alright, good luck, trap there. I was fully expecting DDD to go for the dash attack. And online, it's not just something you can uh, react to, as far as I know. Um. Alright, somehow I was dividing the up smash itself. Um. Alright. I think we're still good. Ooh, but that kid of DDD up smash takes out my second stock. That's quite the way to dodge a Gordo. Gunnold Snipe almost takes out Judgment's final stock. Honestly, I thought I was gonna get hit by the down smash before the force smash could ever come out. But I guess my health isn't that bad. But yeah, good fight. Alright, my health is uh, high tier. Forgot about that. Anyways, let's continue these matches. To final destination we go. Alright. I guess it's kind of expected to hit haunt every time the match starts. But he wasn't at that super center of the spikes start happening yet. Somehow made it back. Alright. And the up smash takes out my first still. I'm gonna chalk that up to big value privileges. Thank you. 
Meant to go for a down smash there. Yeah, like that. Eric Bauer takes that judgment, second silk. And that throws an S destruction indeed. Down there, it takes out see, my second stuff. And now we go on to the final stock. Well, at least my ledge grabs are being refreshed each time I. Well, almost each time I. Get a bit of an edge here. Another back here from downtown doesn't quite take, take out Sweet Judgment's final stock. It seems uh, I got a little cocky there in the uh, Amir timing there. But yeah, ju Judgment to sure did win this time. <laughs> Anyways, good fight. I suppose I should grab my water bottle while I have the chance. Unfortunately, it takes a bit for matches to start in Smash Ultimate. Like, at least 2-3 seconds. I forgot to talk. I might lose. Okay. Unfortunately, it was only the shockwave of the uh, forward smash that got me there. Oh, he baited me there. And that'll be the end of the second stock. Yeah, all well, because I didn't taunt first. Anyways, Judgment goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Well played. I imagine that too well played was more of a reluctant one. Like, I know I didn't play that well in that in that match. Alright, alright. There we go. Now it's a fair fight. Oh yeah, DDD probably can't fall through platforms while he's performing his up special. See, back hair came out just in time.
DDD was safe and a little too high for that sort of creator to reach there. Um, yeah, okay. That probably wasn't the best move to use there. We're really doing some scrapping here, aren't we? And the sort of the creator takes out Judgment to second stock. Uh, Alright, we're good. And the border takes out my final stock. And judgment goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Now that was a good fight. Comments that I keep on making about the judgment is staying in the ring for a bit longer. I had a, I have a feeling that there won't be a lot of people in the arena today. I could just chalk it up to wishful thinking, being like. It, Hey, maybe they're off playing Octopath Traveler 2 or something, but not a lot of people are gonna play a, a JRPG, especially after Smash Bros. gets flooded by them. <laughs> or maybe JRPGs aren't really their types, that's also a thing too. But yeah, there's definitely something I'm missing here. Let's see what games released today. According to IGN, we got Bolong, Give Fall on Destiny, Dead Cells, Expansion, Clash Artifacts of Chaos, Fatal Frame, Monster Energy, Supercross 6. Those are all the PlayStation games. Or wait, no, those are all the March games, actually. Yo, WWE 2K23? Resident Evil 4 for the PS5? That's gonna be out way later in the month. Um... Oh, wait. I just... I just realized that everyone's gonna be out playing the Mario Kart DLC that's just come out. Especially with Birdo being in the game now. But I suppose there are... A lot of other attractive features to the new Mario Kart 8 DLC. And all that. No one's gonna be around to hear all the new music that I put into the program. <laughs> like I figured... I would put some Earthbound stuff into there, just as a, just as some songs to chill, to chill to, and all that.
So yeah, safe to say I haven't tried out the Mario Kart 8 DLC just yet. But yeah, I guess the uh, main feature that's gonna draw everyone in is Birdo and also the Yoshi's Island truck. Which honestly seemed kinda hype on the outset. I guess as a way to help attract people, I could just say I could attract people. Welcome! Hey, good morning, Kitty Wolf. Yeah, it seems everyone's going on to play the Mario Kart 8 DLC that recently came out, if I guess correctly. So yeah, every little bit of uh, every little bit of uh, people joining the arena is uh, welcome here. Anyways, we got uh, Dan versus uh, Ted with the uh, Toon Link versus Violet. Who could have expected that? Thought I was uh, gonna kill him uh, to such an unfair percent again. And the forwarder takes out my first stock? Yeah. It also seems that Sue Bottles up here has a really generous hitbox. Might as well make sure that uh, Tunelink doesn't make it to the back, honestly. And it also seems that uh, Tunelink's not gonna do the DI for the up special to Nair combo. So, that'll be something to watch out for. Once again, DI'ing that word air wrong, I get sent straight to the blast zone. Though, in all honesty, I have a feeling that even if I DI'ed it correctly, I still would have gotten sent straight to the blast zone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah, alright. Anyways, Dan gets to stay in the ring for a bit longer and goes on to play against whoever else is up next. Oh, that's you, Kitty. That's you, Kitty Wolf. Okay. But yeah, good fight. Guess we'll continue these matches for a bit. Final destination we go. Gotta go fast. Uh -oh. <laughs> Gotta remember that not a lot of things are true at zero percent. Just so I don't try to go for down throw forward air. Really close there. But then the villain up takes out to the shield, and the Amir delivers the one two punch. Uh, yeah, okay. I guess I didn't recover correctly or something. Get KO'd that easily, fortunately. Almost got the neutral air, and the tunelic down air actually works as a ledge trap. Alright. Seems I was naive enough to think only Sephiroth had that privilege. But yeah, good fight. Anyways, Dan goes up against Josh up next. Could be smile. Right. Josh also go for Sue for the bios. Anyways, on to Midgar we go. And I guess I changed to the arena rule set that I could make in the future is to add each of the alter to the stage rotation. Just to add another layer of challenge. Speaking of challenging, we have the Kitty Wolf here. Successfully pulling off a zero to death here. Definitely looked like dude, Dan was about to go for another zero to death. But it appears that Josh would not let him. As he should. Uh, 
So I'll send those guys to the... Down through to up special... Well, down through to up smash combo there. Which only works as a tech chase, it seems. Down smash almost takes out Sue Josh's second stock. We can have a fierce fight going on off stage. Tip before smash almost takes out Dan's first stock. It seems that Dan is so willing to go all out to take out Josh's second stock. Mainly thanks to the stock lead, but also the fact that Josh is at a really high percent now. Like, Tindling's gotta do something, right? Porto takes out Josh's second stock. Seemed like he, Dan was about to get the final stop with the zero to death there. One greedy down there later, and they, now both Josh and Big Kitty Wolf are at a stop tie. Yeah, they're both tied as far as stops go. Jab lock later, Kitty Wolf takes out Josh's final stun. And if they go on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. I suppose it would not hurt for. Yeah, I guess it wouldn't hurt too late for Josh and KK Slider to enter the ring. Alright, cool beats. Anyways, we got the Tuna Link vs. Bioth matchup once again. Back on to Midgar we go. I just wanna got the air bar there. Got the uh, hey, neutral air again there. No, oh, I didn't mean to turn around the mirror there. Dang it. Uh, okay. Somehow I managed to dodge all those four tilts in a row there. Then the arrow into back throw takes out my first stock. Then I return the favor with the back here. sort of damage on a, a kitty wolf here, right? That's right. And now I'll probably get heated to the blackstone, gladly. <laughs> Although it's gonna take a bit of an effort to, to begin to pull that off. Yeah. 
Clutch Kitty Wolf got caught by the Sorted Creator there for a moment. After a bit of shenanigans, my fourth smash takes out the Kitty Wolf's first silk or second silk. Okay, so Medgar is such a stupid kind of jank sometimes. <laughs> I better be careful if I want to... Alright, fine. Oh, just find some other way then. Downtown. This cave goes on to stand in for a bit longer. Yeah. I almost said stay in the ring uh, for a bit longer. But. At least I managed to stay. At least I managed to say ring instead of arena. <laughs> All right, now we got a full house. Now we got Dan versus Josh with a Tuna Link versus Piranha Plant. On to Wily Castle we go. I had the time to plug in my laptop before it unexpectedly shuts off. It almost looks like we got a double bomb combo here. And understandably, Kitty Wolf is playing pretty carefully since Prana Plant has the capabilities to just end your life whenever she wants to. Seems that some of Chrono Plant's gameplay will revolve around the getting hard reads. But her ledge trapping is just stellar, that's for sure.
Oh, frick. It almost seemed like his uh, next extendo medic was about to take out Dan's second still. Uh, see, so, well, is that back here? Josh seems to have the prong like ledge dropping down in path. And that down arrow will take out Dan's first stop. Or second stop. But yeah, things are now coming down to the wire. Just gotta be careful with that Xenic Extendo Medic, cause it. Well. It would be kind of a problem if you got hit by it. Now Kitty Wolf takes advantage of Prana Plant's big body privileges. Being one of the heaviest characters in the game, it Prana Plant's really easy to combo as a result. Endomatic almost takes out Kitty Wolf's shield once again. And yeah, that at a situation like this where the opponents at the high percent and they, both players are at one stock, it seems that it doesn't really hurt to do a bit of zoning here. Josh is also almost getting is some really good KOs. If it weren't for Wily Castle's the big stage privileges, the, the Dan probably would have gotten KO'd a few times already. Yeah. But the forward tilt from the Kitty Wolf takes out Josh's final stock. Yeah, Kiro goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against KK Slider up next. Oh, I guess now I now that I really noticed KK Slider's name. I wonder what the case could stand for. I suppose it's got explained in the Animal Crossing lore somewhere. But yeah, after a after a toss from Kitty Wolf, the match officially starts with a Toon Link versus Aegis. Slider's doing quite a bit on a dam here. Just knowing where to land all the moves and all that. Lightning Buster sends Dan off the stage. Pyra kinda needs to not be able to grab opponents while her sword is just is spinning in the air thanks to Blazing End. 
That's a big player of far superior for a lot of situations in Mithra. Anyways, despite everything, Kitty Wolf is refusing to die. But to the Aegis down smash says otherwise. Punishment to help KK Sawyer back onto the stage, but uh, KK Sawyer could not anticipate to the up special waiting for him. Good game of neutral here. The kitty wolf is uh, a bit close to getting taken out by Pyra. Almost got down there to up smashed. And that prominence revolt almost ended the things too. KK Slider does manage to get that final hit with the Lightning Buster and takes out Kitty Wolf's final, well, second still. Sword Tilt is a really funny move. Like, you think it's only supposed to hit in front of him, but see, turns out it's also got a back hit. And not a lot of Sword Tilts have the back hits to hit them. And the Sword Air takes out KK Slider's second stock. Where we've arrived at Kitty Wolf's final phase in the fight. Doing quite a bit more zoning just to make sure the damage is being dealt. But of course, zoning will not matter to a fast character like Mithra. Hyra, meanwhile, I think can get zoned out easier. Neutral almost takes out Dan's final stuff. And uh, Kitty Wolves also had that uh, percent where a Mithra smash attack could uh, take him out, it seems. We're running down to one minute left on the clock. Promise Revolt almost uh, hits, but uh, Dan was able to dodge out the way just in time. Now we're just going to to see any and all attempts at Oh yeah, I guess Mithra's Lightning Buster just grants her a few frames of intangibility there. But yeah, the back throw from Toon Link takes out KK Slider's final stock, and Kitty Wolf goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against Virgo up next. Also, have a good rest of your day, Josh. Buddy. 
But now we're seeing Toonalink versus Ken. Onto PS2 we go. Dan going for a taunt and Virgo gets sick confused by all this. Both players are zoning each other out. See, we do see a tiny bit of progress being made on both sides here. Seen a bit more advantage coming from Kitty Wolf. Safe to say, in a matchup two, where your character is into him for the best frame data, it seems your options would be to use your longest range option that offers you as much leeway as possible. Which explains why Dan's. Kitty Wolf entered the final phase of their fight early. And it's working pretty well. Virgo has no idea what to do against it at the moment. Oh, that would have been quite the anime betrayal if the bomb hit him right into the Shoryuken, though. Just a good old Discord notification showing up on my phone. But yeah, both players are at a pretty high percent, but Kitty Wolf clearly has the advantage. Now with a two stock lead. But it doesn't appear that Kitty Wolf will be be playing any less record, well, any more records anytime soon, it seems. Oh, Virgo did just get a KO off of a Ken combo. Interesting stuff to Kitty Wolf there. Two close jabs into a Shoryuken. Should have just see, thrown out that Shoryuken whenever you could. And Kitty Wolf's not letting Virgo off the hook here. One spin attack later, and Virgo's final stock is out of the park. Kitty Wolf goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. And Dan goes up against the suit my battle for the next. Three, 
Onto PS2 we go. Oh, I thought we would be talking about this during the match. Oh well. Hopefully, Violet didn't just say stay focused. If that's the case, that would just be a message for himself. Sent the other direction. Huh. And the bomb into the up there takes up my first stock. Then very quickly the bomb into the down air takes out my second stock. It seems that Dan read me like a book here. That would be enough to take out the first stuff there. And turns out my hopes have been fulfilled. Let's go. Alright. Couldn't attack in time. But fortunately, I managed to lift that. Unfortunately, Phoenix 2 managed to make some lives there. Oh, from the looks of it, I have activated the final phase here. But then the neutral layer from Mid Kitty Wolf takes out my final stuff. Go on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. It appears I'll have to pull out some bigger guns if I want to have a bit more variety of matches here. Back to the drawing board I go, it seems. But yeah, these matches have been getting really close. Okay. Next up, we got Kitty Wolf versus KK Slider with the Tuna Link versus Rosalina. Three, two, 
on to small battlefield we go. Both players are at two fairly even percents, with only five and a half percent separating them, but see now Kitty Wolf widens that gap even wider. Well, makes that gap even wider. Yeah, something like that. Spin attack almost sticks out to KK Slider, but see, Kitty Wolf throws out another one. Solidifying the stock takeage. And the up smash takes out Dan's first stock. Well, it seems like KK Slider is starting to get a bit, a bit of an advantage here. Then the Ford Smash takes out Kitty Wolf's second stock. Kitty Wolf congratulates KK Slider on the effort there. And, and proceeds to murder their Luna. These side recoveries are working out really well for KK Slider, that's for sure. But the Luma's dead now. And Dan tried to go for a finishing, well, finisher with a spin attack, but that's not quite, that's not quite gonna do it. That KK Slider goes for what seems to be a disrespect there. The stage bike after the spin attack has been finished. And KK Slider goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against Virgo's Ken up next. At least I think that would be Virgo's Ken. I could be wrong though. Ready? Those were scary games. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Anyways, on to Yoshi's story we go. Looks like Virgo may have a significant advantage here. Especially after Limo's gone. Although it was entirely possible that see, Virgo failed the Shoryuken and it just falls to their doom there. Anyways, the forward smash takes out KK Slider's first stock. It also seems that Virgo's yeah, pretty well warmed up now. Like, just being able to get in through all the zoner stuff that Rosalina has. So, it seems that Rosalina is as qualified of a zoner as Melee Marth is. Oh yeah, speaking of Marth, 
I think he's being considered a high tier in this game now, instead of a low tier as he was at the start of this. I mean, yeah, he can utilize those tipper zones really well. He just needs to be in the right hands. But Lucina is ultimately easier to play, but not exactly better than Mark. Oh, Virgo gets a rude awakening from the Luna there. But the Luma has been taken out and is hopefully for Virgo and Rosalina as well. But KK Slider is doing their very best to stay alive here. Up Smash takes out Virgo's second stock. Virgo goes for a sure you can hit out of hit stun, which I don't think I've seen before actually. But then the back air takes out KK Slider's final suck. And I guess it was safe to assume that the back air wouldn't take KO, so Virgo just went to work it, trying to take out the Luma with the top smoky. Anyways, Virgo goes on to fight my Robin up next. On to Smashville we go. How dare that Hogan went out against my baby Thunder. That's child abuse. Kinda figured I got Arc Thunder charged up. Elf Thunder takes out Virgo's uh, first stock. Virgo is uh, just looking uh, for an opportunity to uh, get that Shoryuken in there. Uh, Weston goes blind. Sure you can combo takes out my second self. Yeah, I gotta watch out for that arc fire into up smash combo. Or just arc fire in general. Uh, I thought I would beat it out with the up air there. Alright, we take this. Oh. Fortunately, I was able to get it back, but that recovery was too high. Anyways, Virgo goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Good fight, as always.
going up against Kitty Wolf up next. Anyways, how about that whiplash? It's like, we... Earlier we got one of the more intense songs in the game just blasting through the music program as quietly as possible. Now we got one of the most chill songs in the program. <laughs> But yeah, it's safe to say you may need to see a chiropractor after a flash like that. Oh, I'm no medical expert. Anyways, we got the Ken vs. Bowser on the Northern Cave we go. And Kitty Wolf is uh, getting some pretty good stuff off of Virgo here. Only difference between Bowser and Toon Link is that Bowser has uh, the biggest body privileges of them all. Wait. The biggest big pro uh, the biggest big body privileges of them all. Which means it will be really easy to combo him. Really tasty combo food Bowser is. But see, Kitty Wolf is managing to escape all of the Ken stuff pretty good. Probably thanks to big body privileges. Just not being in a hit stun for as long. If I guess correctly, anyways. I guess we're good in to charge up that focus attack all the way, and that's how Kitty Wolf was able to shield it. Anyways, I'm sure you can take out Kitty Wolf's second stop. But Kitty Wolf isn't exactly done dealing damage just yet. Like earlier, we saw Kitty Wolf go for the border off the stage. Kitty Wolf waiting patiently for the folks attack to be finished and it then goes for the down air. Like Virgo's uh, uh, getting some really good big body privileges off of uh, Bowser here. Not dealing, not taking a single bit of damage this stuff. And the sure you can combo takes out uh, Kitty Wolf's final stop. Virgo goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Yeah, I feel that. <laughs> Anyways, Virgo goes up against Piggy Mane up next, with the Ken vs. Pikachu. Thanks for the games, you have to do life still, sadly. Yeah, understandable. But yeah, thanks for coming over and have a good rest of your day. Anyways, on to the Lilac Cruise we go. With the Pikachu vs. Ken. It seems that Piggy Mane left the down smash rip a little too early there. And too sure you can see later, Virgo has a stock advantage.
How did that happen? <laughs> oh well, I guess that'll all be a uh, question for another time then. Catch just stood there and did, took the down air from Pikachu there. Though he was going for the focus attack. I didn't think the super armor for that move came out that early. Seems that Virgo, I guess, got a little greedy with the focus attack. Like, is there some sort of damage cap that the shadows can take before they get broken out of focus attack armor? Who knows, honestly. Pikachu is really exercising his small body privileges. Just, it just will provide a lot of attacks that would hit a lot of other characters. But yeah, Virgo just wanted that match to be over with. After all those shenanigans that happened earlier on. But yeah, I'm sure you can take out uh, Piggy Mane's final stop. And Virgo goes up against KK Slider up next. Ready? This time with a Ken versus Peach. Small battlefield we go. This could turn out to be a pretty interesting fight. Also, KK Slider could very. Oh wait, I got KK Slider confused with another person who came into the arena today. But KK Slider could very well be playing random or something. Trying to do an Iron Man again, see if people have the consistent skill and all that. It seems. I don't know. And the sure you can combo takes that KK Slider's first stock. Counters would get through you or can it into your trouble here, it seems. But yeah, did you know that according to Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and 3DS, the Shoto Down Special is considered a counter? I mean, I have no idea why it would be considered a counter. Like, sure, I guess, uh, I guess anybody who hits them with a certain move would do. Oh. I guess anybody who would uh, hit them with a strong attack would be in for a nasty surprise if they 
take out them during the focus attack, but that's just about it as far as how focus attack could be a counter attack. Please, now it's Sig Ken vs. Robin on Counting City. Huh, I thought I wouldn't get launched very far. I was really hoping I wouldn't get hit with the focus attack there. Cause Virgo's really good at see blanking out when all the when to use all the focus attacks anyways. Um alright. Thanks to Big Stage Privileges from Town and City. I managed to stay alive for just a little bit longer. I guess that's it. Sure you can. Takes out my first stock. But it doesn't appear that Virgo is out of the water just yet. As evidenced by the love and neutral air. But yeah, my Robin goes on to fight whoever's up next. Good fight though. Going up against Angel L up next. Or Angel. Or something like that. On to final destination One, we go. go. Really gave me enough time to charge up to Elfinger there. As you should. Finished the uh, Electro Shock arm already. Of uh, interesting stuff happening with the, how Robin's items work and all that. Fortunately, I still had two blades of L1 left. Let's see. Alright, should be back. Word to down smash. Doesn't quite do it just yet. Right 
That wasn't my bestie either, but we'll make do. Forder takes out the Angel's the second stock. It just looks like I made him enter the final phase of the fight here. I'll just use up the rest of the Arcfire drums that I have. Again, the fact that the throne didn't KO is more of a Robin sucks moment. Back through? Oh, Angel made it. Yeah, Angel made it too. Down smash from downtown takes out the AGL. It's it. Yeah. Down smash takes out the final stock. It's like the. Even if it was a little laggy there. Looking back at the uh, note that Kitty Wolf posted after losing to Virgo earlier. I wonder what situation even happened for Kermit to just whip out an AK-47 and start blasting everywhere. Or maybe that was a uh, bow shop or something. Actually, no. Apparently, there's a lot of uh, Kermit puppets around that people just started doing whatever they want with them. So, someone probably did make Kermit hold an AK-47. might be. Okay. I'm just gonna recover now. Center snake. Oh, boy. Alright. <laughs> uh, I kind of was expecting the non to just grab Pikachu before the up smash could even happen. Just to show how good Pikmin's reactions are. Yeah. 
doesn't really help with it. I mean, I guess me, for chance. But good reactions are always good. All oh, right, get up attack exists. Forgot. Okay. He's going up against KK Slider's knee baller up next. I guess that's supposed to be Alice Angel from Bendy and the Ink Machine. Yeah, I won't get to take care of that easily. Just gotta watch out for the head on assault that see. This me bowler has. Oh, so close to getting hit with the up smash there. You want to leave? Anyways, 11 neutral air takes out the meatballer's super still. Head on assault, he surprisingly didn't KO yet. And fortunately, I don't have to worry about the uppercut top special that the Ebrawler might have. Mainly since that's already taken up by the Soaring X kick. Which leads me to wonder what the neutral special could be. Probably the exploding sidekick or something. Forder takes out see, the knee bowler's second stock. I somehow didn't hit it all there. Slider managed to SCI out of that one so they don't get trapped in the territory of the wind blades and all that. Alright, yeah, I will pick out KK Slider's final stop and I go on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against Virgo up next. Also have a good rest of your day, Piggy Nine. Yeah. Three, two, 
Bastion Queen. Yeah, Hollow Bastion we go. Okay, so Virgo is simply out to range to my baby thunder. Which is what ended up happening there. Anyways, the arc fire into imagination takes out Virgo's first stop, and then Virgo turns to favor. But that sure you can come though. March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb. Yeah, it's definitely a coming in like a lion today, to be honest. I'm sure you can out a shield, takes out my second stuff. But then I return to the with a down smash. It definitely seems that the battle is a bit more slower paced now. That we are starting to just feel each other out here. Then after an edge guard like that, the fourth smash takes out to Virgo's final slot. The key to victory lies within. And that'll be that for that match. I think after this next battle, I'll change characters once again. Angel L oh, changes colors. Might have been me not playing Smash for a bit, but let's see. Do need to know that the Dark Pit had a gold ult. Honestly, it looks pretty good. I 
guess I didn't really account for the kind of like get a good electric shock arm is still having the hitbox attached to it. He lays a lot of neutral air, takes out two angels to the first stock. Here's my input to take a forward and not quite go through it. Really went for it all there, actually. Didn't mean to go for another arc fire, but we take those. And this bike to end my rampage there. Angel's kind of thinking that a few taunts to neutral are gonna win them the match, though. <laughs> But then the 11 up here takes out Angel's two final stuck, and I uh, decide to go ahead and move right, on. The key to victory lies within. And the slow motion effect too, as well. Mainly because it doesn't take as much work to do, and also it's healthier for the Joy-Cons, so that's why. And also because I can't dash dance for the white page. <laughs> I forgot to change characters. Oh, well, we'll do it after this match. Seems I misplaced my Ellen's there. Sure, you can almost take out some crystal. Virgo is gonna. Hey, recover there. Now you're going to next level, get ready. Alright. You know, maybe I should stay as Robin then. With a challenge like that. But yeah, welcome to the stream, Angel. I thought I could uh, catch him with a grab on the way down there. Alright, not sure you can out of shield. Oh, 
Läuft er. Sehr gut. Okay. You know, now I kind of understand why some people use suboptimal throws. Like, the back throw... Yeah, it was going to launch a further distance, but in the wrong direction, too, so... That's into next time, I guess. A lazy L and Spike takes out Virgo's final stock, and I go on to fight the next level of Angel. Anyways, good fight. Now Angel is red. And if you decide to incorporate some more taunts into your game plan, I consider that a level down rather than a level up. Just so you know. I'm kind of thankful that to the Owen Spike that I uh, received on my end, it, it wasn't see, too strong of a spike. Is that death? Nope, not yet. Anyways, the uh, down here takes out my first stop. Alright, it seems that Angel is waking up here. Gentleman Jab takes out Angel's uh, final stock, and I go on to steam the room for uh, a bit longer. Good fight, though. Nice, just warming up. Alright. Guess I'll remain as Robin then. Just gotta give it to your best shot. Alright, I'm actually gonna... Get hit with a Ken combo right away. Cool beats. Three. 
you can just quite take out my first stock just yet. But my Thunder Tome ran out, hence the uh, 4 kill. Right. Wait, how did the Fire Tome knock him? Alright, now that's some really good awareness tick. Surprisingly not death yet. Yo, my Arc Thunder. Jumped right into that see, Hadoken, but it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Mike takes out Virga's second stock. No, don't waste just yet! Okay. takes out Virgo's final stock. The key to victory lies within. Now that's a great catch. Hey, Harley's in the house. Welcome back. Last we checked, Angelish could be getting warmed up now, so let's we'll see how this goes. Jumped. 
just kind of going deep with those edge guards. Actually, that's perfectly deep. Then I return the figure with a left into back here. Yeah. Somehow not getting the uh, dark pit spike there. Um. Okay, so it looks like Angel suit's just gonna go off stage each time I go off stage. I could probably leverage that. So I tricked Angel into playing better. <laughs> All right. Got to grab out a shield there, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly didn't think I would break through the armor there, but. Nasher sure gotta do what a Nasher sure gotta do. I gotta just smash that down smash. Uh yeah, better look next time. Anyways, going up against Harley up next. Up, let's go! Oh, uh, yeah. Alright, this works. And the Robin Edge Grid takes out to Hurley's super stuff.
that was on me for getting all that. Got a head chase there. Almost got the jab lock, but I knew for sure that's not what it's called. Ah, I forgot to jump. Okay. Got some good stuff there. Um, all right, got an opening. And of course, if you're on tangent abilities, it's gonna protect pretty well against a a book the size of Robin's hand just coming down and blocking him on the head. that shield down there with the rapid jet there. Alright, safe to say Harley's shield is fully regenerated. Drop to my boat just like that. Okay. <sighs> so close. Then the arc fire into imagination takes out Harley's final stop. Yeah, that was truly a good game right there. After this next match, I'll go ahead and change characters for real this time around. So true, man. So true. Robin vs. Ken. On to Kalos Pokemon Under League we go. I was hoping to continue the edge guard because that definitely would have KO'd. Thunder. 
Good nice. I thought that. Okay. Now yeah, we're good. Our player to imagination takes a super good super stuff. Actually, good SDI out of the art fire, though. Hell, my That's a bitch. Hell, everything in shambles. <laughs> All right. Let's give up too soon now. Gotta love landing up here. It's just so uh, cool to land, honestly. And the up air to sure you can takes up my final stock. And finally ends my reign of terror. I did it! Good job, Ken. But yeah, with that said, I'll go ahead and change characters and also use the restroom. Of course, I would need to change characters first. Yeah. I haven't done Urgent in a while, so I'll go him. Hmm. Okay, I guess going to the restroom is out of the question for the moment. And the and there aren't any ads rolling at the moment, so let's see. So yeah. It seems I'm wrapping up development on the next version of Beat Matrix. Just need to add in a few more things and it should be all good. As you may have seen on my YouTube, I'm adding in a new song to Beat Matrix. That being the Fancy Bug Club. And... Yeah, it do be pretty fancy, but also quite ominous. Like... What... Like, what could that ending up be all about? It just sounds kind of vicious and really dangerous, you know? But as for other stuff getting added into Beat Matrix, there will be a background that change colors. 
mainly to help add to the mood of the songs and all that. Of course, if you don't want to, to see all the changing colors, or if you have epilepsy, then you're free to turn off the dyna turn off the dynamic background colors and the options. Virgo is up by two stocks, and the Angel is uh, is on one stock. Virgo has 134 and Pit at 104. Yeah, it seems that Virgo might win this one. Yo, Harley coming in clutch with the commentary in the, in the chat, alright. Alright, Dash Attack just killed you, Ken. Hey, two failed to sure you can. Yeah, it seems that. Hey. Yeah, it seems that everybody's just falling out of Ken's Troy Yukins for some reason. Very close calls here. Yeah, Angel's just escaping death by the skin of his teeth from the looks of it. Are you sure you can catch his pit unexpectedly? And that will be a victory for Virgo. Yeah, just gotta watch out for all those uh, shoryukens, that's for sure. Anyways, with that out of the way, I can finally use the restroom and they have something interesting happening on stream. Anyways, I'll be back. Anyways, we are on Dreamland with Virgo versus Harley. Especially after playing through Octopath Traveler 2 a bit, and finally starting on Temino's story, I keep on almost calling Virgo V-Day. I mean, Virgo definitely seems to be as much of a challenge as V-Day is. Especially since uh, uh, V-Day he supposedly he took out uh, most of well incapacitated most of the gods in Celestia. 
but see, Elfric managed to just have to be day for a bit. So just saying, if Vite is a boss fight and an Octopath Traveler too, it, this may be a very tough match. And of course RNG can screw you over. That too. Anyways, one pineapple later, Virgo goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against my hero up next. You gotta be careful with my Erdrick here. He's kind of inconsistent, like, one moment he could uh, it just top deck a Kling, and another moment he could it top deck a Kaboom that would uh, win the match. But of course, it'll take a bit to get used to the. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be getting gimped anytime soon. Never mind, this spike seals it. Hitting Ken with a metal slash again. That time it was on accident. Critical forward smash. Actually, pineapple? Yo, the pineapple! Um, sure, why not? Completely airballed to those forward tilts, so. That's where goes to second stock. And an unexpected sure you can takes out my final stock. Waiting for shield pressure, I should zone. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind the next time. Anyways, good flight. Anyways, Virgo goes up against Angel up next. With a Ken versus Dark Pit, maybe? Ready? Yeah, alright. Yeah, 
definitely seems to be the case. I mean, it's been working pretty well so far, so... Angel has a pretty good lead at the moment. And this isn't really trying to extend that lead at all there. Somehow the Ultra Shock arm just got blocked off by the Tosnofki there. For some reason. Ford Smash takes that Virgo's first stock. And it looks like Angel's got a pretty good advantage so far. Sure, you can almost take out Angel's first stock, but so the DI saved him there. Angel kind of seems focused on uh, piling as so much damage onto Virgo as possible there. Nothing wrong with that. Just need to not send him in all the wrong directions. And the Shoryuken takes out Angel's uh, first stock, and the Virgo returns to the favor with the taunt of his own. Don't know what Ken says whenever he does the beckoning taunt. Because the only taunt I know can to have is the thumbs up taunt. And also the get serious taunt. Smash almost takes out Angel's second stock, but then the Shoryuken does the wrist of that. Yeah, it does the wrist of that. But then Angel takes out Virgo's second jump and his final stock as well. And yeah, it does look like Angel is the last man standing here. So he goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer, going up against the Kane Dash up next. But the Dark Pit versus Banjo. Well, let's see how this begins. Uh, I was trying to make a Banjo pun uh, uh, by saying, uh, let's see how this Banjo see, but. You know how puns made on uh, the fly work? They don't, so. <laughs> well, okay, they rarely do. I mean. But yeah, let's see how this band goes. But yeah, Kane is doing pretty good in this matchup. And if my limited knowledge of the Japanese names, thanks to Duncan Rumpa, has teach me anything, then 
Ikane is probably a girl's name. I don't know. But let's just say it is. And Angel messes up the recovery and they fall to his doom there. Angel flexes a bit before returning to shield. The best type of flex. Akane has got a pretty good advantage going though. He just needs to land a good attack on Angel and in then she would get a two stock lead. Stage spike, but fortunately for Akane, Banjo had one Wonderwing left. No more Wonderwings for the rest of that stock, though. Down smash almost takes out Takane's first duck, but then the aerial finishes her off. But now Takane now has all her Wonderwing specs, so Angel would need to be a little bit more careful here. Along with all the other tools that Banjo has. Down throw to up smash, takes out to Angel's final stuck, and Akane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going on to fight me up next, if I guess correctly. Harley up next. Alright. Could be seeing the Banjo vs. Dr. Mario battle here. Which is a matchup that I haven't seen for quite a bit, if I remember right. If I remembered wrong, then this is a matchup I've not seen at all. <laughs> but yeah, I've got to see. Friends who named Banjo and Dr. Mario. Alright, with the uh, two tonks out of the way, the battle really starts. They're playing a bit of a really safe neutral before you're noticing that everybody's all good to go, and now it's off to the races. Akane's got a pretty good advantage going. She just needs to land a really good hit and maybe land a nasty gimp, and that'll be the end of Harley's first stock. Back throw! Well, he's got a KO at some point. And yeah, I guess it did kind of KO there. Tear to death. Which means Harley has a bit of voice skill here. Looks like Harley is about to score a first stock here. And the forward smash takes out Akane's first stock. Harley drops in right on top of the Wonder Wing that see what's happening below him. And now Akane's back to edge guarding. The forward air takes out Harley's first, no, second stock. Seems we're back to where we started here.
but the Doctor Tornado hopes to turn things around. Now both players are more even than not. And Harley seems kinda of pumped up pumped up for this comeback here. Dr. Tornado evens up the percents a bit more here. Interesting use of the egg grenade as an extra little bit of movement after the Wonder Wing is done. Not sure what Akane was trying with the down throw down there. But the neutral air stage spike takes out Hurley's final stock. And the Kane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Now that came down to the wire there. Anyways, the Kane goes on to fight me up next. The Banjo vs. Hero matchup. Yeah, online is... Online mode's favorite food is uh, text, actually. So it, so it seems. Wait, what move was I doing earlier? Oh. Okay. Fair enough. The shield break. Um, alright. Let's just get this over with here. And the forward throw into Wonder Wing returns the favor. a nice looking bounce uh, to the top of the menu too. Um, zoom. Alright. No, it's about to go for the pass too. Uh, snooze. Finish the Wonder Wing view right as it was coming out. Cool beans. But then the forward smash takes out my second stuff. Man would have been uh, quite the wrong move to in the match on. But I felt that Wonder Wing coming, but he wasn't able to react in time. Is what they all say, but I really need this time, okay? <laughs> Good fight, though. Anyways, the Kane goes up against Virgo up next. Kind of jams, to be honest. Ready? 
Another testament to how good the Super Smash Bros. Brawl's soundtrack is. Anyways, on to Dreamland we go. We got a Kane Dash versus Virgo. Shield hook. That's interesting. But yeah, both players are at the high percent. Just one good attack is needed to take out the other's first stop. And the forward smash takes out Akane's first stop. And the forward smash takes out Virgo's first stop. might have miscalculated how long the loop is for some of the brawl songs that I got on this program. Oh wait, no, it's starting to fade out. Okay. I thought I got the extended loop for that song for some reason. Wonder Wing under the stage! You bad man. <laughs> Anyways, after getting into his head, Akane goes on to his start out throne advantage. And the second Wonder Wing almost takes out Virgo's final stock. Then the Banjo Forte. Takes out Virgo's say, final stock. If Virgo the eye bat a bit better, then things would have ended up a lot differently. Or if Virgo was able to lose that at all, anyways. Anyways, Akane goes on to face Angel up next. Whenever you're ready. We could be seeing the Dark Pit vs. Banjo matchup of a lifetime right here. But only the match will tell here. On to final destination we go, we got Banjo vs. Dark Pit. Angel's got a pretty solid neutral at the moment. But now it looks like Kakane's turn to back up all the damage here. Actually, no, they're just uh, taking turns. Like, taking fair turns at this. As if they're fighting in a very civilized warfare that the, that the British was known for during the American Revolution. <laughs> Anyways, the down smash takes out Angel's uh, first stock. And the 
it looks like Angel's uh, looking for that uh, piece of payback. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Electroshock Harm takes out Akane's uh, first stop. One explosive Wonder Wing later, and the Forder later, Angel's second stock is out of the park. And Akane is uh, at a pretty comfortable lead at the moment. And she may just very well extend that lead, thanks to Banjo's zoning tools and all of that. That was almost the end of the match right there. And Akane is definitely looking for those down throw imagination combos. Gets a few legs in and then a final Wonder Wing to finish off Angel's final stop. Akane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against Harley up next. And here we have the Banjo vs. Dr. Mario matchup. Well, Banjo's got a very strange nose, anatomically speaking. Like, his nose is literally a blueberry on top of a snout. So, the question is, what could that blueberry be for? I mean, I guess judging by its color, it could be used to it really help with it warming up the air that goes into Banjo's lungs. And by that logic, it should be really easy to give Banjo a bloody nose. So maybe that's not it. <laughs> Distractions inside. Probably like almost uh, got the first stock to off of Akane, but uh, Akane beat him to it. But then Harley eats her into the blast zone. And they, both players are at low percent on their second stock. Some may be more advantageous than others. So. But yeah, safe to say the grenade egg is a really good way to, to cover the end lag of the Wonder Wing, for sure. Dr. Tornado almost to shield pokes to Banjo. Nikane had to use up two Wonder Wings to get back to, well, to try to get to Harley off the stage, but then missing. 
go with it. Dr. Mario Forder takes out Akane's first. Well, Akane's second still. Carly's basically on fire right now. Akane's uh, occasionally getting some uh, hits in, but see. Uh, yeah, Carly's. Uh, I guess the drive to fight is stronger than hers at the moment. Almost got forward smashed into the blast zone, but the Connie score there takes out Harley's second stuff. Really wouldn't see. Though it isn't safe to say Akane is out of the water yet. Or out of the woods yet. That those grenade eggs are uh, getting uh, Akane out of all those situations pretty well. And an unexpected double Wonder Wing takes out Harley's final stalk. Akane just saw the chance and took it. And she goes on to fight me next. Also, have a good rest of your day, Angel. Looks like it's uh, my turn to try to be the hero here. Because Akane is clearly the Wi Fi warrior here. On to Wily Castle we go. I'm go. just gonna top deck. Okay, we're good. Okay, good. Okay, bad. Yeah, there wasn't too much I could have done in that moment. Uh, wait, what? Oh. Alright, let's pretend that didn't happen. Alright, good. We got the bounce, and then the zoom. Oh yeah, snooze is only a single hitting move, so once it hits the shield, you can't really... You can't really get hit by it again, that's for sure. Yeah, sure, let's do another zoom. Um, another zoom. Oh, frick! Okay, we're at the same number of stops now. Um... Yeah. Bouncing right into the blast zone. <laughs> And we also got an encore going. Well played. Okay, so maybe my hero isn't too viable for the current situation. Let's go with the Ridley for the time being.
Anyways, we got to Kane versus Sufian. I almost see read that name as Flyin, but that's not right. With the Banjo versus Lucas. Man, this always happens. No way, Ridley? That's my favorite Fire Emblem character. Well, I guess he do be a dark dragon after all. He could be the Shadow Dragon. But yeah, things were at a pretty good standstill as far as neutrals go. So Akane is finding more opportunities to strike than if Fion is. Or there, takes that Fion's first stop. Hmm, guess we'll enjoy it. Yeah, might as well ignore the weird phone call that Sid trying to get to my attention here. Also, interesting use of the uh, grenade egg there. If Flame decided to go for a down smash instead of the PK freeze, then that grenade egg might have actually come in handy. What the heck? The Kana uses her last Wonder Wing of the stock, and looks like we may truly be at a standstill here. Yo, the neutral game! Unmatched! Akane tries to go for down throw a big, well, down throw a good imagination, but uh, Fion managed to escape. But the, uh, I guess the uh, up tilt takes out Akane's first stock, well, takes out Fion's second stock. And then Fion finally gets an up smash to take out her first stock. Akane's still winning, and now she has even more Wonder Wings than before, so... Down throw to up tilt, not really gonna do too much there. It appears that Fallion's really good at mashing out of his uh, down throw, that's for sure. Or maybe Lucas is just too short to get hit by the up tilt after the down throw. The Kane is really going in for it all though. Down throw to up smash. Yeah, Lucas might as well just be too short. When it, whenever he gets buried, anyways. But then two legs into an up tilt. Never fails. And the Kane goes down to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Go. Going up against Virgo up next.
Do we have the Banjo versus Ken matchup? That's the Kalos Pokemon League we go. I was about to say, it seems there won't be too much zoning in this match, but see, be immediately open to Ken throw and Hadoken's left and right. Actually, mainly right and right. He hasn't thrown a Hadoken in any other direction since. And we may pop off if he does. Oh, he got pretty close though. Yo! Alright. This is worthy of a Kerm Chimp. Yeah! <laughs> Kone is see, really going deep for the Zetch guards there. Don't throw into good imagination. Since we're going off the stage and into the boss zone. Akane decides to do the Banjo Power Walk too. Kone is still at a pretty high percent, but Kalos Pokemon League does have its high ceilings. Making it so that Ken has a bit of trouble getting KOs on this stage. And up until now, I never really saw a reason to counterpick to Kalos, but now I know. Oh, yeah, I've actually counterpicked to Kalos a few times now that I think about it. Ah, my bad. Riku <laughs> tries a Shoryuken combo, but Takane held her ground. Once again, but Sukun easily gets punished with a forward smash. And Takane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Probably going up against Harley up next? Yeah, okay. Anyways, have a good rest of your day, Virgo. Got the Banjo versus Dr. Mario. Three, two, On to final destination one, we go. go. Early literally when Sid time to tip the scales. I guess it's supposed to signify how ominous they are or something? I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, getting back to commentating the match, the Kong is pretty close to getting KO'd. Kane off the stage, but not exactly to blast him. Kane's at a pretty high percent now, and she's just not willing to die here. And also, reached up to Banjo. 
or just the rage of anybody being is a very scary character to be around, for sure. Okay, not very scary, but scary enough. Because not only did that character receive a power boost, see if, uh, see. Yeah, that, but the player behind the character is just resolving not to get KO'd at all. Going for more with punishes and anything else, really. Ford's Mesh doesn't quite take out Harley's super stealth. Then the late Mayor takes out Akane's first stealth. Akane is trying to return the favor as quickly as possible, though, with all his forward airs. But then one mistake, misspace to one, it sends Akane spiraling towards the 50% range. But she manages to land a forward air on Harley and take out his first stock. That'll... Oh wait. Was... I, don't... I don't know if the controller died or not. But yeah, I suppose that was reason enough to not bother with the Banjo there. Just see him neutral airing on top of you while you're off stage. Jackal forward smash almost did her in. Up smash, not quite gonna do it. And the air dodge she costed Harley the recovery there. Honestly, uh, quite a few of us thought the air dodge would uh, did take him further. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Hey, welcome to the stream, Makane. You done with that? Ah, uh, so it seems it's time to bring out a counter pick here. Anyways, I've also brought out a counter pick. Going with the Banjo versus Ridley. Even though Ridley may suffer from big body privileges, he may be. He may be one of the better characters that I have without going into cheater territory like Ralden, that's for sure. Ah, almost got it. Stage bike takes out uh, Akane's uh, first stop. Er, never mind, it doesn't. That was an interesting clash. takes out my second stock, but then I finally take out Akane's super stock with the back here. Seems you'll need to try a bit harder here. need to tech there. And the forwarder almost takes out my final stock. Stage bike? 
kill the popular stage like the safe to say that sit on a kid very well to out my final sub with a strong with a strong move. Seems she just rolls like that. Anyways, the Kane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against Ray up next. See how this goes. Ready? With the banjo versus Luigi. In theory, a really terrible matchup for Luigi. But we'll see if Ray can make it work here. Seems that Kane has uh, taken quite a bit of damage here already, so maybe this isn't too bad of a matchup for Ray. Back throws ends the Kane off the stage. Gets a tech, but your ray doesn't recover correctly. So now it looks like K Ray is going to look for those snatch attacks, and he got one. Oh, frick. Is that a glide dash from Akane? I never really got the hang of how to do one, honestly. Yeah, Ray's jump has been taken away, and so has his second stop. And now it looks like it's Akane's turn to go on the event, go on the offensive here. Luigi just casually steps on Banjo's Wonder Wing. That's insane, honestly. Yeah, Ray do be fighting for his life at the moment. And the egg takes away the Luigi's jump, and Akane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. That would have been really close, but Akane seems to know the Luigi matchup really well, and it dispatches Luigi pretty quickly there. Anyways, Akane goes on to fight against Fayan up next. With the Banjo vs. Ukis. On to Pokemon Stadium 2 we go. It seems that Akane is doing a bit better in this match than she was in the previous matches here. Well, previous match with Lucas, I mean. Just getting all those punishes here, and it just seems that Tifayan is doing the inevitable. At 
this point, anyways. But yeah, it never hurts to to tack on some damage shoot from afar here. Down through to good imagination, takes out the fucking super stuck. And the Kane keeps that wondering do for a bit longer. Use it for something good, I guess. Uh, shield pusher is alright. Okay, that hit. So to speak. Somehow, Akane was able to STI out of the PK Thunder Rocket there. Or read down smash. Sends the flying it up to the sky there. But then the forward smash from flying takes out Akane's sick. No, first stop. But she returns the favor immediately with the forward air. Seems like Akane is wrapping things up here. Oh, it's getting some Wonder Wings here and there. But then the down throw to down smash doesn't quite work. Seems like she's playing with the food here. But then the final Wonder Wing takes out Sue Fiyan's final stock, and the Kane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Go. Going up against Harley up next. And if I guess correctly, this will be a significantly tougher match here. Pulling out the Steve, I guess? Fion quickly throws in a good fight in the waiting area. Good sport, honestly. played Steve in a bit, so just gonna see how this goes. Though I have a feeling that what's happening in this match is basically the same thing as it would happen if I were to say I haven't played Robin in a bit. May take a bit to warm up, but whenever warm up does happen, then Ew. Then Harley really does see shine there. He lays a Wonder Wing, takes out Harley's first duck.
some energy for commentating is in order. I'll be back in a little bit. Hurley's on a bit of a rampage here. Yeah, I wasn't sure why I thought the uh, forward smash wouldn't hit him there. Close match with like that, so he takes out Harley's final stop. And the Kane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Against my Ridley up next. On to Kalos Pokemon go. League we go. My really neutral is severely lacking here. Fortunately, the it down throw to good imagination it didn't really get me there. Good. Ah. Just a bit more damage taken than usual. Well, I'm really lucky that Takane didn't try to get a wonder with me there. Then the down smash out of shield takes out my first hook. Banjo. Oh right, throw on tangibility. Well, throw on tangibility. And the neutral air takes out Sit Akane's second stock.
wonder if I could have just it tried spiking Banjo there and it would have been a bit different. Thunder Wonder Ring from downtown takes out my final stock, and Kane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. And yeah, good fight. Going up against Ray up next. Oh, that's just close. And man, for a good few moments, Ray was playing out of his mind right there. It almost looked like it was gonna be uh, his soul for a soul type of skin coming from Ray there, but see, the Kone did have another jump in store. After a little game of chicken, the Ray sends uh, Takane off the stage with the down smash, but Takane returns the favor. It's fire! Oh. That's one tricky way to end the match right there. And I suppose that's one of those uh, anime betrayals as well. Even though Luigi doesn't have doesn't have anything that could be used against him in that matchup. As far as items and projectiles go. Just that feature that he has where he accidentally sticks his head into the wall is quite the thing there. Next up, we got Banjo vs Sonic. Yeah, we're doing like okay. After the encore, the well, after the encore got added, the stream will now last until like 11:30. Or er. oh, I guess I completely forgot that. <laughs> Yeah, the Thursday streams are supposed to be three hours old. 
Eh, just for today I'll and make this a stream that lasts until 12 o'clock. So yeah, we have 30 minutes left until the end of today's stream, so let's make each match count. Which reminds me, I should switch over to Riddly real Yeah, I should switch over to Riddly real quick. This is Riddly, believe it or not. <laughs> I was about to say, only downside is that we missed the rest of this match. But considering the characters that are playing in the match, I don't think I'll be missing much. But hey, maybe the hit and run style is more if I am the style anyway, so. Only one way to find out for sure, though. The game did it out as spectate. Ah, uh, so it seems that. Only Akane and Defyan are, are the only ones to win this, this match. Anyways, I guess I'll take. Oh, uh, you just. You just quit it out? I. I suppose while we're all here, I'll tell you. I'll tell you all a bit more about. See, the Octopath Traveler 2. So, recently I finished all of Team Coot's stories. Which means Cassie, Ochat, Oswald, and Dethrone stories, along with the cross paths with Cassie and Ochet. And that's a. Uh... And honestly, the stories have been really good. Like, real good. And if people are there for the story, good for them. It's kind of unfortunate that there's no difficulty toggle for the stories. It's like, you'll just need to gather some really good equipment in order to get the most out of the story and all that. Well, get the most out of the story and the gameplay. In which case, gameplay is also really good. New to Octopath Traveler 2, we got the latent powers. You gain you gain access to them by getting damaged and breaking the opponent. And by gaining access to them, I mean you fill up a little meter that lets you gain access to them. And every traveler has a different latent power. Hikari and the Ochet get uh, get access to three different, well, to three new moves that would help them in different ways. Like, Ochet has two powerful attacks that she can target on a single foe and on every foe. And then she could also reduce the defenses of all the foes in the battle, as well as to reduce their shield points. Meanwhile, Hikari. I don't exactly know what his latent power moves are yet, but he is able to unleash a powerful sword attack and then after the turn ends he can act again, except he isn't able to use his 
complete some power during the, the entering part. He's also he can also unleash a really powerful sword attack on all of those if I remember correctly. Or just a single foe without having to use a divine skill. Oh wait, and then he and then he can also use a sword attack on all foes and then a spear attack on all foes with in quick succession. But yeah, as for other stuff, we're gonna have to take a look at the box art. So Agnia can it turn any single target his skill into a multi-target skill with her latent power just for that one attack. Like, say you want to utilize the. Huh. Say you want to utilize her skill Ruinous Kick, which would reduce a shield point of a single foe. Oh, I guess his grandma's calling for him or something. You forgot how to play Steve! No, just at the worst time, too! Frick! Ah, well. But, yeah. So you want to utilize the... So you want to utilize her skill Ruinous Kick, which would unleash a powerful physical attack on a foe that would reduce their shield point. Three, well, you can one, use a, you can use Agnia's latent power to make her kick all the opponents at once and reduce their shield points that way. You've been playing Dr. Mario so much you forgot your own name. Don't like this. Well, I guess. Well, I guess to know that. Well, I guess to know that. See, we're actually watching watching a match now. I suppose I should just continue with the commentary. But yeah, that's a little snippet on on how late the powers work. In Octopath Traveler 2, anyways. And all the latent powers do is add a whole new element of strategy to the game. Like, you could. You could wait on breaking a foe just so the foe could either deal just enough damage to one of your party members to fill up their latent gauge. Or you could have that party with the uh, latent gauge who's not exactly full just yet. Just to. Just start with. Well, just fill up their latent gauge after the break. Well, after they break, and all that. Not to mention how everybody's latent powers are unique to them and all that. Okay, now I'll stop talking about Octopath Traveler 2. But yeah, Akane's getting some really good stuff off of Ray at the moment. Oh man, Ray had two opportunities to end the stop there with the spike there. He almost killed himself with a, a blunderbuss suck, but he managed to get back just fine. Then he checks Banjo out at the store cashew and it takes out Akane's first stop.
Uh, seems like one of those two shape moments to be between the two characters here. The only thing is that Banjo can get by just fine it, well, just using the B button moves. Well, okay, up to a point. He still has only five uses of Wonder Wing. Well, okay, only one use now. And the up smash takes out Ray's final stock. We have 15 minutes left until the end of today's stream, so let's make each battle count. Let's see if I can take down the raid boss of the arena. Seems I was pretty eager to press the start button there, but it is 15 minutes left till the end of today's stream. Gotta get all those battles done. Anyways, on to final destination we go. Didn't get caught after all. Oh, yeah. Akane is really going for this movement here, punching the arc fire out of the air, as Banjo should. Two stocks taken away just like that? Ah, I won't have it. We may be back on pace here. was a good run, but yeah, maybe I, maybe I'll get a, another chance later on down the line. Anyways, good fight. But yeah, I can just chalk that loss to me being dumb, and I'll just be better next match, that's for sure. Anyways, Akane goes up against Vyan up next. Wait, now that I think about it, Thoron might actually have a use in the Banjo matchup. Since Thoron is one of those anti anti zoning tools that Robin can use to mainly make opponents and not get too comfortable. Like, giant, a threat of a giant beam that flies across the entire stage? Who wouldn't see one to dodge that? Oh, 
And of course, if the opponent doesn't take the threat of the death of the Kamehameha seriously, then it, I could just make him take it seriously. found a reason to have this, but at that moment it would have been a great place to put a Nick applause track or something like that. Anyway, the F Smash takes out to Fion's first stock. Fine's looking to return to favor as soon as possible with Charizard. What? Yo, alright. We got the grenade combo into... We got the jab... Jab 1, jab 2. To combo into the grenade. And Akane could've gotten so much more off of that actually. But she SDC, unfortunately. Akane sick got fine on the ropes here. And yeah, don't let the slow speed of Wonder Wing cool you there. Because it will still mess you up. If you're not careful enough. Trying to go for the quick KO strategies and all of that. Then the two side B's clashed. And the Wonder Wing obviously wins out since Charizard's side special is not a command grab, so. Iconic goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Going up against Harley up next. He could probably see Dr. Mario again. Yeah, okay. This time with the default doc. players are playing a pretty decent game of neutral at the moment. Probably just going howdy neighbor and they, then Akane dash suddenly throws a rock at Harley's window. Let's just say that wasn't very nice. Partitia sleeping caught me off guard there, but then I remember, oh yeah, it was I who put it there. <laughs> Then the board smash takes out Harley's first stock. Akane dash makes made sure that Tushi got the banjo locked down. Oh, there was quite an attempt to spike there, but Takane did not let him put the up there. Stage bike. And it seems we got quite a fight to 
to get everybody over to their ideal spots anyways. Akane Dash gets taken out by the hospital bed that's probably prepared for her. End of order, takes that early second stock. And it looks like the forder will it take out Harley's final stock. And Akane goes on to stay in the ring for a bit longer. Surely someone's gotta dethrone her before the stream ends in five minutes. But it'll still be pretty hype to see a Wi-Fi warrior stay in the ring for this long. Anyways, Akane goes on to hey, fight Ray up next. You guard the ring, cool beans. On to Yoshi's Island we go. The storybook version of it, anyways. It almost looked like Kray was about to get his big body privileges taken advantage of. But it seems that Kray's getting the hang of it here. I mean, sure, some big body privileges are. Taking advantage of it at the moment. But one advantage that Bowser does have is Tough Guy. Just being able to armor through hit a lot of weak attacks. And which Banjo's Rapid Jab and I guess his eggs are her weak attacks that Bowser can, duff, can Tough Guy through. But Akane punishes Ray for trying to grab the ledge again with a down smash. You, you lose your legend tangibility whenever you grab the ledge again, so be careful of that. Seems Akane is see. Actually, the one who's sick in the hang of this matchup. Down smash sends the Ray off the stage. It looks like Kray wanted to end the match as quickly as possible here. But the other from Bowser takes out Akane's first stock. So it seems that Akane is in that phase where she's gonna look for her any whiff punishes to whiff. Then the offstage Wonder Wing takes out Ray's final stock. And yeah, it is 11.59 according to my phone. The, the local time on my stream says differently. Um... Yeah, I'll just... Leave it at that. 
But yeah, good job on Akane for successfully guarding the, the ring, and that'll be GG's. Anyways, I'll see y'all tomorrow here to develop him more of that beat matrix at 4 o'clock p.m. U.S. Central Time. Anyways, have a good rest of your day.